Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sweden, or Bust. And, well, looks like instead of busting, we Swedened, because to Sweden is now a verb, I've just decided. And, yeah, we did it. We bloody did it. Oh, we did it, and I'm so happy and relieved a little bit too, because of the way things actually panned out for this last couple of months, uh, last month of the season. Now... Before, you can see that we've won the league now, so I certainly won't be spoiling anything by saying these things. Um, so the first thing we need to talk about is the fact that, um, Christ, what was it? Yes, we have new sponsors this year, and it's an increased uh, amount of £2 million, which has definitely been noticed in our transfer budget, because we've got increased budgets, and now look at our budget. This year, £3.13 million transfer budget, and 18500 a week. That's almost enough to get Johan Elmander. I don't intend to, because there's no point in wasting it all in one go. But my point is, we do now have some money. And I want you guys to tell me what to do with it. Now, also, I wanted to say, if you've been enjoying this series so far, be sure to leave a like on it, because it lets me know that I'm still doing something right, and that I'm not boring y'all to tears. So, there's that. Moving along, back into things. Right, also, 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 I got myself a new contract, so that's always good. Uh, it's a two-year deal. So that is always good. Now then, there were some other things I definitely wanted to make sure I spoke about. So we've done the sponsors. We've done... We're in the Champions League. So there's definitely that. And there was one other thing. Ah. Uh, I can't remember what it was. That's annoying. I made a note of it. One sec. I'll be back in a sec. I'm just going to check what it was. Right back. Sorry about that. Right. One thing. Sorry. I make notes sometimes, but I lost my notes for this episode, which is very annoying. And that's why it was very unprofessional. Me, but whatever. Let's move on. The thing I was trying to talk about, we've got an increased scouting range. And I didn't even realize that we had a limited scouting range in the first place because everyone I'd been able to everyone I tried to scout. I'd been able to scout. I can only assume that we had like a European scouting range or something. And everyone I tried to scout was in Europe anyway, so I hadn't noticed. Basically, we can now scout the world over. And I'm guessing the reason they've upgraded that is because we are going to be playing in the Champions League. Now, I don't know exactly what round of the Champions League we go into. I think it's the playoff round. Let's just have a little look. No, it's the second qualifying round. Christ on a bike. We're going to have some difficulties here. I've got... Oh, Jesus. Uh, actually, let's just... Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's going to be quite a difficult one. I thought we were going to go to the playoff round, and if we drop out of that, we get to go into the Europa League. But it looks like it's going to be much more difficult than that. Let's hope we don't get a massively difficult tie. But if we improve over the uh, winter, we will have to see how things go. Anyway, let's get straight into the fixtures. We have a highlighted episode today, of course. A highlighted game, but it will not be this one. You know which one it's going to be. It'll be the last one. It's this one here. I thought, why not go for the one with the most goals? Let's celebrate. And it was an important game, but not for the reasons you'd think. We started off this month with a home game against Falkenberg, and we were close. They ran us right to the wire on this one, in the sense that not really at all. <laughs> we were ahead through John Goosens. They actually got on back through Daniel Johansson and equalised, but then Kenneth Zahora, with another goal for us, which is good to see, managed to make it 2-1. We were definitely the better side and deserved to win the game. I'm just, it's a shame we couldn't win it by more goals, and I've been saying that a lot this year. We need to find a way to make these chances count. That's key. We're having a lot of shots, but not that many on target. And I think that's because of our shoot on sight approach. And I might take that off and see how that does for us. It's hard to tell if that's going to work or not. It might create more clear cut chances for us, which we might be able to put away rather than wasting the ball on that. What do you guys think? Should I take off the shoot on sight command? We'll have to see. Let me know in the description. In the comments. Why do I always say in the description? We then move on to this was a disappointing game if ever I did see one trust me oh, I was horrible I thought Elfsport at home this has got to be winnable and we probably should have won it but we didn't and that's what that really makes the difference here Marcus Roden got them in front and then an Emil Salomonson own goal straight into the second half made it even worse and we just couldn't fight our way back into the game no matter what we did they they wouldn't even give us many chances to create we just couldn't do it and I genuinely thought we were in big trouble because before that game we actually got a five-point lead at the top of the league. And that was good because of the way other teams around us just seemed to be beating each other. And that wonderful little pack was just eating itself, which allowed us to gain a little bit of a gap at the top. Unfortunately, we lost at home to Osborne. They all won, which meant the gap went back to two points, basically. And it was a very, very tight. And that was a two-point gap over about five teams. It was so tight in there. And Elspore were one of those teams. They came right back into it. 
But I knew what we had to do. We went to Avedeberg and I thought we could maybe get a draw here because they're a decent side, mid-table kind of club. We went and we got the win. They missed a penalty early on. And when I when they missed that, I thought maybe this could be our day. And then John Goosens stepped up and was the hero for us. Not once, but twice. And he's been decent down that left. He's been injured quite a bit, but the games he's played for us, he's done well and he's scored goals. A little bit like, I like, if I could have my perfect choice, it'd be Smedberg, Dallas and Goosens on the wings because they've been great for us and probably the best players in those positions for us this season so far. Now, when that happened, basically, I noticed that Orebro suddenly had two games in, they had a game in hand on us and then they had the game against us and we pulled out the five-point gap again, but... The problem was they had that game in hand, which meant they would pull it back to two. And then we had to play away on the last day of the season. So when their next game was, I decided I was going to literally go and watch the game, which I've not done on Football Manager this year, I don't think, at all. You know, you can attend other people's games, normally for scouting or whatever, but I went and did it. They were playing away at Elfsborg. Thank fuck for that. They were playing away at Elfsborg, and they lost 1-0 in the end. But... Elspor had eight clear-cut chances to their one. They should have lost that game 5-6-1, or six, one, probably. They were piss-poor and showed the kind of form that probably suits probably what they should be aiming for this season. They're not a good side. Well, they are. They've just been punching above their weight massively. As a result of that, we won the title without actually even playing a game. So, yeah. Which meant that the last game of the season, away at Orebro, which I was bricking it about because I thought they could nick it from us right under our noses there was a completely nothing game uh, which is why I didn't really pay much attention to this game I just thought fuck it let's go all out attack and see what happens and in the end we actually ended up winning it so I was a little bit surprised about that and I guess it was just to rub it in their faces a little bit more so I'm going to show you the highlights of this because I wasn't really even paying that much attention during this game I just sort of thought right let's go out there and see what happens it matters not who wins we did in the end so I'm kind of curious to see these highlights as well because I kind of missed a lot of it. I was uh, messing around with something. So I will show you guys the highlights and I will see you there. Here we are in the highlights. Now, basically, this game, we got off to a massively quick start. They took the kick off and then we nicked the ball off them, it would appear. And then, essentially, just went straight down. And it was actually our fullback, Salamonson, who comes overlapping. Watch him coming down the outside there. Whipped across. Oh, oh no, sorry, it was the other side. He's a right-sided player, what we're talking about. It was uh, Augustinson that's on the left, isn't it? Salamonson on the right, just getting in there and making it 1-0 to us inside the first minute of the game. 32 seconds in it was. Unfortunately, didn't take them long, and on six minutes, they were straight back into it. Really poor goal. In fact, it looked like he didn't even take the shot. He just tried to control it there, and Wickstrom was able to put Orebro level. And I remember seeing this and thinking, ah, okay, whatever. A draw, I would take a draw. Unfortunately, just after halftime, they had other ideas. Um, Alvarez's ball over the top was cut out immediately, and some of those kicks from here have not been great, and I need to talk to him about that. They got the ball in the midfield, Hansani, Bjorgård into Yassin, and they just sort of played it around in the midfield, and we're normally comfortable to let teams do that. It's when they beat the fullback and whip it across, that's when we're in trouble. We managed to block the initial shot, but then Bjorgård's effort found the net, and it was 2-1 to them at the start of the second half, and I got worried well I'm not worried because I didn't want to lose this game ideally thankfully within two or three minutes a great ball over the top Zahora is straight in here and he makes no mistake with the finish two all and we're back in it things got a little bit better for us just after that as we do like to score little batches of goals and today was no different straight after that Smedberg Dallas with a corner whips it in bang Philip Hagland, who I had playing today instead of uh, Sokolowski because he picked up a slight knock. So it's good to have that back up. Uh, he may not get so many games next year when Schuller comes in, but Schuller? I'm not talking about Andre Schuller. I'm talking about uh, Matthias Schuller, I think it is. And then we got another goal from a corner. Smedberg Dallas is ball in, and Biasmia, our captain, was able to put it in. So a couple more assists there for Smedberg Dallas. I think he's probably going to win that award this season. And then... Not long after that, really, uh, sort of 15 minutes, we got the ball again in this midfield. A nice little bit of passing, eventually lost the ball. However, we want it straight back. Malangu's ball up to Zahora, cut out, comes back down again, and eventually comes back to Zahora, drops it off to Malangu, out to the wing, Goosens again, starts to run through the centre, but then picks a lovely ball out of the top. Smed, but Dallas is through, and wow, he's had one hell of a game. And you can see why I, I keep playing this lad. He's got great free kicks, great crossing, He's decent in front of goal as well. He's a very, very good player. And that put us 5-2 up. I kind of wish it had stayed 5-2, but unfortunately we did let them back in 
quite quickly. In fact, it was straight off the kickoff. Ball straight over the top to Holmberg and puts it in the net. It's a shame, but it was still the win, and the win is what matters in that game. Now, I'm going to show you the league, because you're going to notice something. Malmö came fifth. They had a horrible month, like a really genuinely terrible month. I, in fact, I don't know if they even won a game in those games. I'm pretty certain they were right in there on like 47 points at the end of last month when we had 49. I think they lost all four games this month and ended up finishing fifth. And they were very lucky not to get overtaken by Halmstad. Malmo aren't even going to be playing in Europe this season, uh, next season, which is saying something. They've slipped right off the pace. Unfortunately, Orebro, as a result of those two poor results, ended up finishing fourth despite being our main contender for a lot of the last part of the season. Helsingborg ended up finishing second with Elfsborg sneaking in to third place. Now, yeah, if I'm going to take a look at Malmo's last few fixtures. Oh, what? Surely we can see. Yeah, here we go. They had... They drew as your garden, my bad. Lost 3-0 away at Kalmar. Lost 2-1 at home to Hecken, and they were also beaten 5-1 by Mielby, which basically obliterated their goal difference. If you look, their form is actually horrific, dating back all the way to sort of September. Early September, like losing to Gefle, lost at Halmstad, uh, home to Halmstad, and at home to Gefle, in fact. They beat Elspore, surprisingly, but then that's the only game they've won. That it's not really much of a surprise. I think it might have been their European stretch. Who knows? But it certainly wasn't good enough, and they're not in Europe this year. But we are. We are going to be playing in the Champions League, and I can't wait for that. Now, I'm going to just have a look at the transfers to see if we did manage to make any new ones. I'm not sure if I was able to find any more youth talent to come in. No, in the end, I have yet to be able to find any more. I scanned pretty much every single lower league club in Sweden, and I've picked out some of the best talent that were able, was able to come to us, basically. And I will continue to do that, because I'm going to try and build a team of superheroes, Swedish superheroes, and they're going to take us forward in the future because I think instead of buying in players for loads of money, we're going to try and build using young Swedish talent. But instead of buying in players that are 80, uh, sorry, 19, 20, 21 kind of time, we're going to buy them at 15, not 15, yeah, 15, 16 for like 15K on these compensation clauses and try and build them into a great team. I wish I had more time before Football Manager 15 comes out to actually do this because then we could have a real dynasty going. But I'm certain to try and do something like that in Football Manager 15. It won't be one of my starting series, but don't you worry, I'll definitely be coming back to Scandinavia in some part. Maybe go to Finland. It's a little bit of an unknown, well, not an unknown quality. It's just a sort of, it's the the underdog of the four Scandinavian leagues, you know, Norwegian League, Danish League, Swedish League, but the Finnish League is probably the weakest of the bunch. And I wouldn't mind trying, maybe not with HJK, because they are the number one team in Finland, are they not? Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying with someone like... Is it Tampa United? There's a team called Tampa United, isn't there? Oh, there was. Oh, okay. There used to be a team called... Oh, Tampa United no longer exists. Jesus, how long has it been since I've watched Finnish football? <laughs> uh, wasn't there also a team called AC Vantar? I'm certain there was a team called AC Vantar. Am I imagining that as well? I guess that must be. AC Vantar. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's a strange one. I thought, if you know anything about feed, uh, swin, blah, 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 blah. if you know anything about Finnish football, then let me know, because I could have sworn there was a team called AC Vantar. But, huh. okay, well, I'll, I'll talk about that in another episode of another series entirely. Um, as you can see, Marriott actually won the league this year, so that's kind of cool. Are they any connection no it's just ifk i'm guessing it's a similar word in finnish anyway moving along to our stats i don't know why we're looking at the vekaska liga i assume that bloody thing's come back again of course it has why does that not stay off top appearance maker for the season alfbogay with 49 appearances this year good for him goals zahora with 14 probably could have done with a few more smedberg dalitz eventually ended up with 10 but goosen is not got seven so those wingers have done a decent job for us it's good to see i would also like to make a point that was pointed out to me and that uh, maybe Lassie Weber staying would have actually been a decent choice because in the games he did play for us he was somewhat prolific with goals and assists and average ratings and maybe it was a mistake to get rid of him and I can kind of see that now he certainly would have been useful if nothing else but we won the league so I guess he can't be that bad top assister Smedberg Dallance eventually manages to come away with that one with 11 
And he also wins the play. Oh, no, he doesn't, of course, because Mema Langu, our man in the midfield, gets nine. He hasn't gained any more this month, but he has been injured or suspended. I, I don't know. I can't remember which. Yellows. We've got some stuff with eight. I don't think we've got any Royal Reds this month. I'm assuming Malangu wins the player. Yeah, player of the season has got to go to Malangu. He's been great. Now, I'm just going to try and look and see where we're going to pick things up because there's obviously quite a long break until our next game of the season. Now, I think the next time I should join you is probably going to be for that cup game against Syrianska. And that's not till March. In fact, the 7th of March, which is actually my birthday. So I'll be enjoying that one. And... Yeah, so it's going to be quite a long winter. I'm going to make lots and lots of uh, changes and signings and try to tweak the team and try and come up with a strategy. We're going to play lots of friendlies and I'm going to try out some new stuff to try and find a way of... Obviously, we've got to try and defend our title this year, but we've also got to try and find a way to negotiate the Champions League. I'd love to try and get into the group stages, but I'm certainly not holding my breath. At the very least, I'd like to get knocked out at the playoff stage so we can get dropped straight into the Europa League groups. That would be nice. I'd very much like to get in the Europa League group stage at least so we can have a proper go at it. But that's not going to be for quite some time because obviously it takes uh, sort of mid-season when the early qualifying stages start taking place. So it's going to be a while yet. But we've also got quite an easy draw for the Svenska Kupen. All of these sides, Siljanska, uh, GAIS and uh, Van Elmol are all super end sides currently. I don't know whether they are no 10th don't know if they get promoted or not. Ah, okay, so GAIS will actually be a... Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Surely not. Do they share a stadium with us? Is is this is this true? Somebody back me up on this. Do GAIS... Who are they? What does GAIS even stand for? Um, yeah, do they share the same... Do they... I think they're from Gothenburg too. Um, yeah. Are they from Yotobo as well? Because they're sharing a stadium with us. It would seem. Gamlu Levy. So if you know anything about GAIS, then forgive uh, forgive me for not knowing and feel free to let me know because I'm kind of curious about that. And I'm guessing Vanamo, yeah, they are fifth. So we'll actually will be playing a Alsvenskan side in that, but they look like local, maybe local rivals? Who knows? Strange one, that. Anyway, that's about that for this episode and that's about it for this season. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying it. If you've been enjoying this series, let me know and give it a like. If you liked it, yeah. Give it a like. If you like even more than that, hit the subscribe button and we'll be doing all kinds of cool stuff next year as well as lots of Football Manager 15 videos coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Right, yeah. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.